Thank you for viewing today's lecture where we're going to cover some of the basic scientific method terminology. This will cover some of the information that you've studied almost every year since you've been studying the scientific method. We're just going to review it for those of you who are having trouble holding on to that information and for those of you who just want a refresher for this information. The first piece of terminology that we're going to deal with is observation. And observation is anything you use with the five senses. So data you collect with the five senses. Sight, touch, smell, taste, and hearing. So if you say that something is a certain color, like the grass is green, the sky is blue, that would be an observation. There are also two types of observations you can make. You can make qualitative observations and you can make quantitative observations. A qualitative observation talks about the quality of something. So it would be anything that does not include a number for it. So it sounds like this. It smells like this. It tastes like this. It looks like it's this color. And those pieces of information are qualitative observations. Quantitative observations deal with a quantity of something. So if something is a quantitative observation, it's going to include a number. So observations are information you collect about something that include your five senses. When we're doing and following, going through the scientific method, you're going to have a problem or a question that you're dealing with. Your problem or question is the one thing that you want to know more information about. Okay? Your major question. You are not testing this question specifically, but you're going to eventually develop things that, that start with that question. So you're really going to start all your, um, all your scientific investigations with a problem or a question that comes from some observations that you make. For instance, you may notice that there are lots of dead fish that have washed up on the shore of a lake. And your question becomes, why is it that all of these fish are dying and washing up on the shore? So you start with your observations, you then come to your question. From your question, you develop what's called a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess as to what the answer to that question or problem might be. I believe that the fish are washing up on shore because there is now more pollution in that lake. So that's my hypothesis. One of the easiest ways to write a hypothesis is by what's called an if-then statement. If I do this, then this will happen. Okay. Um, or you can also write it as this is happening because of this situation. So the fish are washing up on shore because there's more pollution in the water. So a hypothesis deals with answering your problem or question based on your major information that you already know about the content. A control group. A control group, if you're running an experiment, is the one setup that you're gonna run that is just like nature. So what is it that is that you're not changing anything related to nature in? That would be your control group. It's what you're going to compare every other experimental setup that you, that you set up to. So your control group is the one that's like nature. And a lot of times we'll describe it just as a control. And your experimental group are the ones that you change something to. Okay. So if I were to run an experiment with the fish, I might take a couple of setups of fish tanks, put some fish in each one of them. My control group would be the one that was just like nature. So the one that had no chemicals added to it. And then I may take and add a certain amount of chemicals to the first one, maybe make, um, add you know, 10 milliliters of chemicals to the first one, 20 milliliters of chemicals to the second one, 30 milliliters of chemicals to the third one. The ones with the added chemicals would be our experimental groups. Now, we have two variables that we're testing. We're always testing variables within our experiments. The first one is called the independent variable. One way to remember which one the independent variable is, is what am I, as the scientist, changing? 
The independent variable is what I, as the scientist, am changing, and it starts with the I. So, in my experimental setup with the fish, I am changing the concentration of pollutants in the water. Now the dependent variable is what changes because I changed the independent variable and is also what I am measuring at the very end of my experiment. So what I'm measuring at the end of this experiment is the number of fish that survive or die. So the dependent variable would be the number of fish that survive or the number of fish that die depending on how I word my hypothesis. And my independent variable, what I changed, is the chemicals or pollutants in the water. Once I run my experiment, I'm going to collect data. Throughout my experiment, I'm gonna let those fish sit in that fish tank for maybe 30 days. And over those 30 days, I'm gonna make observations about the fish. Do they look healthy? Do they look like they're, cause they're not healthy anymore? Do they look, how many of them die each day? Do any of them die each day? Those are my, that's my data. My results are my end pieces of information. So I'm gonna take my data and then I'm gonna take and see what it actually looks like. So I would put it into a graph form. I would take and put it into a, um, into some sort of a data table and actually take a look at what those results are. So my end piece of my data are my results. I then want to take a look at what does this actually mean. Maybe uh, the 10% none of the fish died. Maybe in the, t or the 10 milliliters of, of chemicals none of the fish died. In the 20 milliliters none of the fish died. But in the 30 milliliters, yes, I had fish dying. So what does that actually mean? I want to take and analyze this data. Well, it means that maybe fish can survive to a certain level of pollutants in the water, which would be a threshold. And then I can, once it goes over that threshold, they're going, to start, they're going to start dying. So I need to figure out what do my results actually mean to my experiment. My conclusion would then be related to my hypothesis. Was my hypothesis accepted? Was my hypothesis rejected? And why? If it's rejected, what would I do to change my information? Uh, were there any things that I might have done wrong? Was there any time that I maybe didn't collect the data like I should have? Was there any times where I was not looking at the information in maybe the right, correct way because maybe I was rushing through my information. So what problems might I have had throughout my experiment? That would go with my conclusion. Now two pieces that I have outside here would be an inference. An inference is where I take and say, this is what happened, but I didn't really see it happen. So I'm using some information that I know, some prior information to say this is what happened. And I'll use an inference a lot of times to draw a conclusion and also in my analysis. So I use prior information to try to develop what the actual conclusion to something was without actually making those observations. An example I use in class all the time is if I am standing outside the classroom and I hear a crash inside the classroom. I come into the classroom, I see a window broken, and I see a baseball rolling across the floor. I can make the inference that somebody threw the baseball through the window, and that's what caused it to break. But I didn't actually see that happen. So instead of an observation, it's an inference. Finally, one of the different types of experiments that we will run in science or ways we will collect data, data is called a controlled experiment. And that's what I've been describing here. An experiment where I take and have a control group. I have different experimental setups. And when I go through all of those and look at the information, I'm actually controlling everything. There are other types of ways that we can collect data. We can go out and do a field study. 
and we actually go out into the field and collect data and make observations, but we don't actually control any of that. This here is our controlled experiment. So a controlled experiment is one of the ways that we, we can collect data. So hopefully these terminology pieces are, have been able to help you out on it, more, better information on what the scientific method is and how to understand the different pieces and setups of the scientific method.